What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. We got some celebrating to do. We just passed our February goal of getting to 5,000 subscribers, and you already know, I promise you guys, we'll be doing a giveaway. I'm going to announce something at the end of this video on how we're going to do and when we're going to do that giveaway of a Bulls jersey to one of, one of my loyal subscribers and viewers. So we'll be getting into all of that. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, outside of that, we also have to talk about what happened in the All-Star weekend, how our Bulls performed in that All-Star game. I'm going to talk a little bit about Michael Jordan, and we're also going to be previewing what the Bulls have coming up to end this week. We could do all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central. All right, so first, DeMar and Levine and what they did in the um, in the All-Star game, just A, seeing them, you know, guard each other there for a second was always fun. Um, DeMar and Levine, both, I think Levine played 11, DeMar played 10 minutes, I believe. Uh, they both kept their minutes pretty pretty low there and I, I for one was happy to see that you know you don't want especially in the in a season where oh no i'm sorry demar played 27 minutes and levine did play only 11 minutes but especially with levine coming back from injury you don't want to see zach levine play really heavy minutes in an all-star game demar DeRozan has just been going all season so it makes sense and he was a starter why he played more minutes uh it was fun to see you know especially demar making a key basket and an assist down the stretch as well as Zach Levine, his 360 dunk. In Levine's 11 minutes, he was 5 for 7 from the field, hit 12 points. In DeMar's uh, minutes, he was 4 for 8 from the field, 10 points. And like I said, had some key possessions down the end of that game. And overall, as much as I shitted on the dunk contest because it was terrible, this All-Star game was fun. I know, like, and, I, and one thing that I do like about the new format of the All-Star game is the fact that the defense intensity does kick in in that fourth quarter. Uh, just a little bit. As much as you expect to see in an All-Star game, and, you know, outside of that, we really just get a, 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 a great and exciting expo of basketball for three quarters. It's really just Steph Curry going off in the way that he did. The dunks that we saw from, like, John Morant was more exciting than anything in the dunk contest. And the All-Star game overall for me was a win uh, this year. And it was something that was very positive. And I had fun watching, and especially seeing and having two Bulls players in the All-Star game this year. It was all just came to just make an enjoyable event for me. And I know for many Bulls fans as well. Next year, hopefully, we are, we're talking about three All Stars. We'll talk about that as well uh, for in the in the um, All Star game next year. But overall, this All Star weekend, if I had to rank it, um, All Star weekend is like I, I guess it's like a solid B minus for me, just because the All Star game and event uh, was so great. Zach didn't do great in the three point contest. Three point contest was overall pretty fun. The skills competition was fun. The dunk contest was a fucking complete zero. Friday night All Star kind of always get up a pass that because it's not really a lot going on on Friday nights of All-Star Weekends. But overall, pretty pretty fun weekend. Let me know what you guys think of All-Star Weekend overall down below. Let's move on. Seeing Michael Jordan at the NBA 75 ceremony was great. A lot of people commented like, hey, was was my MJ late? But seeing him, Rodman, like all, it, it, was, it was a great time. Just, you know, anything that reminds us of that dynasty era, we always get fun to see. And, you know, for Michael Jordan, we don't always get to see a lot of him interacting with a lot of his peers him and magic and, and getting to see that it's always fun you know one thing that I, I i wish i got to appreciate more uh was was mj's career because of course i was a kid during it and at that point i was all i was in awe but i didn't have like the basketball mind that i have now and i definitely wish that i, I would have gotten to appreciate that more because like going back and seeing some of those old bulls games it it's something he makes it look so effortless that i think sometimes it's easy to forget just how great jordan was Right. Especially for young people. You guys know, I don't do the whole LeBron versus Jordan debate because to me, that's idiotic. It's more LeBron versus Kobe because LeBron doesn't get to get compared to MJ to me. But that's that's a story for another day that may, may seem to send the comments on fire. But, uh, yeah, it was good to see Michael Jordan out there and, and Bulls and old Bulls in general. Um, and, you know, the NBA 75 ceremony was something that's just special. I didn't even I really coming into this All-Star weekend. I didn't even think about the fact that we may get something like that. Like it just it, it wasn't something that registered to my mind. And it sucks that it had to happen in a sucky ass city like Cleveland. But, you know, it, it kind of is what it is there. Let's get to talk about the Bulls upcoming week before we end this video. The Bulls have two games this week. We have Atlanta Thursday, Memphis on Saturday. Two games that aren't going to be easy games. Records be damned. We know John ja Morant and how amazing he can be. One thing I guarantee you that's not going to happen in the, in the Memphis game is we're not going to see Tristan Thompson picked up by Steven Adams and just carried away like a child. That's one thing that we're definitely not going to see. But the Atlanta game, both of these games are key for me because I think these are good games for us to be able to gauge how what Tristan Thompson's impact on this team is going to be, right? 
if he plays in them, there hasn't been anything to say for sure he's going to play. There hasn't been anything to, to allude that he's not. I really do expect him to just be ready to plug in and be able to go. So, like, getting that addition, addition of Tristan Thompson and seeing how he does against teams with some nice size on the front line and see what dividends that pays and how it changes the Bulls' game with adding some shot blocking, adding some offensive rebounding. And some Bulls fans have even said that they um, – I forget which comment it is, so I forget, like, is Tristan Thompson going to start? I don't really – think that like some people said like Vooch can start as a stretch Have, haven't we seen enough of of the Vooch trying to play stretch anything like Vooch works better from the from the inside out but I don't I don't foresee and I think Tristan Thompson's going to be a starter some some Bulls fans seem to be under that let me know what you guys think maybe I'm off bases I, I've never looked at this and thought oh Tristan Thompson is now going to be starting for us no he's going to be coming off the bench I've always said you know 12 to 15 minutes maybe 18 minutes on the high end a game for Tristan Thompson but these are two good games and tune-up games for the Bulls to kind of get back um in in the rhythm of the regular season and they're going to be tough games. And then it doesn't get any easier for us. We have the second strongest schedule after the All-Star break of any um, NBA team. And, you know, next week we got Miami, Atlanta, and the Bucks all next week. And the Atlanta and the Bucks game are, are back-to-back. That's not like, so us playing well in these two games and having some space between them is good. Because Miami, Atlanta, Bucks, that's going to be a difficult week next week. And we'll, people have asked, and I got asked uh, before on a live stream, do we see the Bulls being able to extend this to 10 games? So that's the next five games that the Bulls have. Atlanta, Memphis, Miami, Atlanta again, and the Bucks. Woo! It's going to be really interesting. And so, um, you know, we we got a, a word last week that uh, Caruso had seven to 10 days before he can come back and start dribbling and shooting. I think now that would put us at about four more days until that happens. So be on the lookout for news over the over the course of that. Before the end of the week, we we'll probably hear how Caruso's doing and how his wrist is responding to um, being back shooting and dribbling. So that's going to give us more uh, I, I idea on his outlook overall and when he can probably uh, is going to be returning. So all those things, the Bulls, it does not get easier for the Bulls, right? As we as we pre- prepare to start getting players back healthy, we know that it's going to really be. Uh, we'll see what happens with Patrick Williams. I've always Patrick Williams. I really do think by that March 10th date is going to be back. And that's really not that far. And then around that area is, is where uh, Caruso and, and uh, Alonzo are also expected to be back. So we really within the next three weeks should have just about everyone back, if not an idea when everyone's going to be back. So that'll, that'll give the Bulls a nice little stretch. They're gearing up um, before the end of the season, well, before the playoffs to really see what who we're going to have and and to get the kinks worked out for anybody who needs to get back in rhythm. But overall, this is a good outlook and a good time uh, for the Bulls. And coming out of an all-star break, uh, it's really good. And I'm glad the team still has a few more days of rest. Still has a few more days of rest. I, I do expect they're going to have practices over then and, and work in Tristan Thompson and, 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 and things like that. But the good thing about Tristan Thompson's role, at least the way that I see it, is that Tristan Thompson's going to be able to come in and just do him, right? So it's not like this big thing of getting him used to the system. He's a veteran. And then I think on top of that, what he's going to be asked to do the Bulls aren't going to be like running any plays for him. So it's not like he really has to. I mean, he does have to grasp what this team's methodology is on offense. Right. But with the veteran in the role that he he needs to play, I do expect it to be really simplified and easy for him to catch on to that. So I don't really expect like any type of, you know, period of, of, of adjustment for him. I could be wrong with that, but we'll see. But let me know what you guys think about everything talked about down below. We will be doing mailbag tomorrow. I know I got a lot of voicemails and a couple of texts from you guys. So we'll go. We'll get into the mailbag tomorrow. Also, tomorrow, we will be doing a live stream. I almost forgot to say that. We'll be doing a live stream tomorrow evening in which we'll do the the jersey giveaway. Also celebrate hitting 5,000 viewers. I'll get that posted sometime tonight so you guys can prepare. I'm looking at probably doing it around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, maybe 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, tomorrow. And then we'll get, get that giveaway and work that out. Got something really planned. This is a fun conversation talking to Bulls fans. So be on the lookout for that and me to post that. But otherwise, that's it for me for today. Make sure you're following the podcast at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform. You can also send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text or voicemail, you can do so at 773-270-2799. That's it. Like I like to end everything on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media. Media.